This is King Arthur of Camelot. You are watching Legend Series Photography on YouTube. Enjoy. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Talk of Figures, episode two to be exact. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. I need some comments, so you guys need to start leaving some comments, man. And I'm seeing the views, but no one's leaving any comments. I feel like I'm talking to myself at this point. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. Uh, today's episode is a quick one. Um, it's just basically what figures, action figure collecting or toy collecting in general means to, be, to, to you or to me. Um, I, know, I know my forte is action figures um, and vehicles and accessories and stuff like that. But I know some people like those pop things and uh, some people like statues or whatever. I've seen some cool stuff just in general in the last couple of years collecting. And just uh, traveling around the stores and comic shops and uh, just like looking on websites. I've seen so much cool stuff. But um, basically, I would just love to see uh, if, if people start leaving comments just what it means to you guys for collecting. Why you started collecting. What you started collecting. What got you into it. Was it a certain action figure? Was it a certain statue? Did you go to a con? Did you go to a toy show? Um, did you go to your friend's house and you saw your friend's collection? and, and that Because that's how it started for me, basically. One night I went to my best buddy's house and uh, he was a big Marvel Legends fan, still is. And he was, um, he had them all on display on his like shelves and stuff. And at the time he wasn't really as many as he has now. He, I mean, he has, I think all of them at this point, but um, he only had like three shelves and he had like, you know, the main ones that you see like Iron Man, or Wolverine. And I think that's what did it for me was Wolverine. It was the first wave of X-Men that they came out with the comic versions. It was the, the one that built, uh, who the hell did it build? I don't even know if they had built a figure at that point. But I just remember it being Rogue, Wolverine, Sabretooth. That wave. I just remember that wave because he was in the brown suit. And it came out and I just like walked over to it. And I was a huge, well, I'm a huge Wolverine fan. He's my favorite character. Well, like he is for most people. <clears throat> and I just, well, I took him off the shelf and I was just staring at him. And I'm just like, this is what these toys look like now. <laughs> and he was just basically looked right at my face. I could tell like, yep, you're, you're in. You're going to start collecting these things. And, uh, he had like an extra Wolverine and he had like two extra ones and he just gave it to me. And he was just like, here, take this one. I started your collection. And uh, man, did it ever. <laughs> I immediately started buying all the Marvel Legends I could. I started back cataloging what I didn't have just so I could catch up. And before I knew it, I had like 150 Marvel Legends figures. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy. And every single wave that would come out, I, I would only collect the comic versions wasn't really big you know, or keen on the MCU, the movie or TV show figures. Um, the only ones I did like was uh, the Hugh Jackman Wolverines. I regretfully never got them because they just sold out so quickly. But uh, I have so many comic Wolverines that I just don't care. <laughs> you know, it just gets to a point where it's just like, listen, you can't get them all. Um, I mean, some people can, but unfortunately I cannot. Um, so I just started collecting Marvel Legends and it got to a point where I basically had every single, at least one version of what I wanted. So whether it was Captain America, I mean, I got to a point where I had Cloak and Dagger. I, I had like the X-Force. And it was just getting to a point where it was just like how it was expanding to a point where it was just like, I can't get, you know, I don't really want any more Marvel Legends figures. There's really not much I could, you know, I, I really want in terms of how many more variants can I get of the same figure, you know? So I like, I don't mind getting variants of my favorites, but, like, at some point, like, you know, I don't really need three storms. You know, no, with all due respect, I like the the white suit from the cartoon. And I, you know, you go the black suit. You know, that, that to me, that was enough. Like, I don't need with the short hair. Although I have it. You know, that's when it became a problem to me. I was just like, oh, what do I need all these fucking figures for? You know, but I do love the chase. And it's the thrill of the chase. Or the thrill of, like, you find it. Nothing's beats beat finding it in the wild. But when you get it online or whatever, you, you know, you get that feeling. Whether it's on Macari or eBay secondhand site, like Facebook Marketplace, whatever whatever the sites are, but, you know, when you score that figure that you always wanted, even even if it is a variant, you just, you, you, you can't bottle that feeling. So it's it's like, a, you know, what is it, a dopamine hit, I guess. It's like a drug. But uh, the dopamine went away from Marvel Legends, at least for me. You know, and I listen, I, Marvel is still my favorite comic book uh, uh, publisher, of, you know, obviously, and I love DC, but that was what that was started to happen. I was like, man, you know, I wish they made Batman figures like this. And just as I'm saying that, McFarlane starts making DC figures, and I'm just like, all right, well, it's time, you got time to start collecting Batman. So I got as many Batman variants as possible. Then all of a sudden, I discovered Mezco Toys, and I love their figures and, and how all the accessories. And then I started discovering action figure photography. And like, I'm a photographer and a videographer myself. Um, Full file, full, full finish productions. That's my other channel and uh, my, my actual my production company. Um, but I, I started finding like 
all these action figure photographers and stuff like that. I was like, whoa, that's what these action figures are for. You know, never, they're not for kids to play with. You know, they're for this. And uh, I, I just went off on a tangent. I'll even cut to some pictures that I've taken. And I just really just took me into the realm of just full-on collecting every single thing I could get, whether it's accessories, dioramas, <laughs> uh, people print, the printing stuff and selling on Etsy. Etsy's another great place. You can find great stuff for action figures. Um, but that, like I said, those are the only lines that I fell in love with. Just, just as I'm starting to, you know, collect Batman, then all of a sudden He-Man, the Masters of the Universe line comes out from Mattel. And then, you know, Hasbro announces they're coming out with G.I. Joe Classifieds. And I'm just like, yo, at, at first I started collecting the G.I. Joe figures because I just thought I needed fodder for the Marvel Legends in terms of uh, action figure photography. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll get some soldiers and stuff like that. So like Spider-Man can kick the, kick the crap out of a couple uh, soldiers, a Cobra soldier, uh, uh guys and then from that point i i just was like oh, I'm, it just started the nostalgia started to kick in the cartoon gi joe and then growing up as a kid like i was I'm, I'm much older than some people you know i'm not gonna sit and tell my age but i'm, I'm older I, I grew up watching the original gi joe on, on the cartoons on tv so i was just like yo man this brings back memories like and then all of a sudden he-man comes out and i'm a huge he-man fan i love swords and sorcery E-Man was one of my favorites. I, I, and I, I know the whole history. It's supposed to be for Conan the Barbarian, which is another one of my favorite characters of all times, Conan. So then I'm like, Jesus, I, I got to get He-Man. You know, so you start with He-Man, Skeletor, and all of a sudden it just, now I have them all. And I'm just, now I'm getting the slush head and Spike Tor and, and uh, um, Webster is the one I'm missing right now that I need. You know, but it just spurns, man. And like, I'm not really a completionist. I know some people are completionists. They want the whole wave. Like, they want all that. I've seen some guys' shelves with the G.I. Joe classified. Like, they're all numbered, and they're in order perfectly. And that, I commend you. I tip my hat to you. I can't do that. I can't keep them in the box, man. I got to take them out. Like I said, in terms of photography, I got to play with them. And I don't buy two or three. I don't do that shit. So I just buy one, play with it. If it breaks, I buy another one. I don't really give a shit, you know? Um, But, yeah, so it's like just, I guess it's like nostalgia for me. I'm assuming it's most of you guys. It's the same fucking thing. You guys love of the cartoons as a kid or it just hit you when you were collecting the, the small guys or like when you collect the Marvel figures it's just it hits that dopamine like when you was a kid and it takes you back to that's basically what it is for me um, like I said it was great because what the community has done now in terms of toy community is it's created so many avenues to actually enjoy the toys as an adult like cause like a couple years ago I mean, I'm gonna go back maybe 10 years ago when you were buying toys for yourself it kind of seemed like a loser like that guy KB Toys like 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 a weirdo. That's what that's what at least I used to, you'd feel like. So I would just go in there and say, "Oh, I'm, you know, my my nephew's birthday." No, I mean I have a, a bunch of nephews, so it made sense. But it was really for me, you know. Now you can just go in there and buy them and feel like I don't give a shit. I'm the, like there's 17 other adults in here buying these figures, you know. I don't I don't care. So it's it's nice that that has become like the norm. Um, but now that it's like you have so many ways to 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 in, to to utilize them and enjoy them in terms of like action figure photography, stop motion. Some of these things articulate so much that you can actually do a great stop motion film with them. I've seen a bunch, with just Marvel Legends in terms of uh, Spider-Boy 16 and a couple other guys out there and their names escape me. I'll put a couple of, of my favorite stop motion, uh, uh, action figure stop motions in, in the comments below. Um, but even like the new thing now, I noticed this play motion, which is another guy that I like watching, Mike the Hunter. They just basically play with the toys and film it. You know, in G.I. Joe Berg, I don't know if anybody's ever saw them, but that style, listen, it's like, you know, you're living you, you, as a kid, you know, and the fact that we live in an era where people don't give a shit about being judged for that, and you can do that, it, it inspired me to do my do it myself. Like, I did a little stop motion thing for He-Man, which I'm still working out the, the whole overall project. I know I did the prologue, it's on my channel, um, but it, I, I do have more coming for that, but it's just, it, it's time consuming, and I've had some issues with my family that I had to handle health-wise. So I'm like, you know, kind of putting stuff in perspective and doing things at my pace. I know it's coming slow, but I'm, you know, but again, at this point, I feel like I'm just doing it for myself because no one's really watching on this channel. I don't really care, you know, because I'm not really doing it to get the views. I'm just sharing it, man. And I'm like, I'm just being enjoying uh, uh, meeting people in the community and seeing what people are doing on YouTube. Like Articulated Ninja is one another guy that I love watching. I just joined his, his membership group on, uh, on his YouTube channel, man. You get a lot of stuff. He, he does a lot of cool videos that, he doesn't put out publicly. You just got to be a member to get. And, you know, it's, it's cool to just feel like you're a part of a community. You feel like a part of a, a brotherhood. I used to be a professional wrestler way many, many years ago. So I missed that locker room atmosphere where you're just like a brotherhood. 
You guys are like in the foxhole together, traveling, doing the doing the shows together, you know. So when you find something like that again, and I'm not saying I'm friends with any of these people. I'd like to be. I'm just not yet. And I'm sure, listen, you get there, you get there. I'm starting to go to toy conventions. I have a lot of issues in terms of um, uh, depression and anxiety. I have very severe social anxiety. So I don't leave my house all that often. That's kind of the reason why I do this stuff is just kind of practice. And uh, that's why I'm not, like I said, I don't post for anybody. I post really for me. So if you watch, I tip my cap to you. Thank you so much. Please just give a like, a comment, man. Maybe you're going through the same thing. And that's like, that's what these figures did. They, they helped me pull me out of the depression. They pull me out of my anxiety. They make me go to toy shows. Hopefully I can meet people. I met a couple people in the aisles of Walmart and Target and then Ollie's discount stores and Ross. You know, I've met a bunch of people, you know, who earn the same thing as me, you know, and it's nice to know I'm not alone, you know? So it, it, it's, and it was, like I said, it also helped me through a lot of that mental stuff with the toy photography. Because being creative and stuff, it just brings you out. You're not so depressed no more when you when you have something to look at and you, or you have something to work on. And and you see like the finished product. And, and to to you if, if 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 that's another thing too. Art is subjective. I know a lot of people post pictures and sometimes they get critiqued by other photographers or they get critiqued by other people from the community. And by I mean that means the toy community. Like uh, um I know of the most popular thing that everybody you know, always goes to is articulating comic book art. Um and they have like literal like guidelines to like match their specific you know everything's got to be tangible as they say where it's got everything's got to be in the picture no uh editing in other words like you're not taking a picture putting it on photoshop and then adding the comic bubbles you got to cut those comic bubbles out and put it in a way where it looks like a comic book panel you know so that's a really cool way aspect too don't get me wrong i've tried it you know um but i've gotten a lot of criticism a lot of people will come on. I don't mean this negatively, but people go on there and they, they tell you what you did wrong instead of just being like, hey, man, great job. You know, you're trying. You know, and, and don't get me wrong. Criticism makes you better and people should all be OK with constructive criticism, which I am. But sometimes, you know, you don't got to be too critic. You don't got to be uh, too much of a critic, you know. Um, but that's why I just I focus more on toy photography and not so much of the uh, to articulating comic book art because to me that just became too um, that, the, the per- perfectionist I guess is the, would be the word they like, look for perfection like that perfect comic book battle and don't get me wrong there's some pictures on on the, that Facebook page or Instagram page out of this world like I couldn't even imagine taking that picture you know how great some of these guys take these pictures guys and girls don't get me wrong I'm not going to be inclusive here um, and everything in between please um, but it, it, it's, it's what it does for you, you know? Like, I, it, may, it brings me out of my depression. It brings me out of my social anxiety. It makes me want to go to toy shows and find toys that I'm looking for, some of my grails, you know? Um, and I want to meet some of the people in the community nowadays. I want to, like, actually meet them in person and, and just exchange notes and exchange, and exchange ideas and just talk about what their favorite figure is. That's why I'm going to try to get some guests on this show now. I want to just talk to some people, man. Just, like I said, I'm using this as an avenue to just meet people in, in the community just so I can make more friends that have the same mindset as me when it comes to toy photography and, and diorama building and kit bashing and customizing. You know, that, that's basically what this all boils down to. You know, it's, it's a hobby, it's an interest, and um, it's, it's, it's what makes you feel better. You know, and at the end of the day, that's really what this is all about. It's just making yourself feel better, making yourself feel nostalgic, making yourself just taking your mind out of the real world. That's, that's dog shit, please. I know what's everything's going on in the world. It sucks. You know, my life ain't that great. You know, but when I get a toy, it just makes it a little less sucky. You know, or you get a great picture on a photography, or you're doing stop motion or play motion. It just, your mind is not where... The negative shit is, you know, it's right there in that moment when you and making you think of when you were a kid and you were playing with these things and there wasn't no problems in the world because you were safe in your house with your mom and dad or your, your you know, your, your uh, whoever took care of you. You know, some people have their aunts, uncles, grandparents, uh, adoptive fathers and, and mothers, you know, stepmoms and dads, whatever you were, you know, you always felt safe playing with those toys. Just that's how I felt. So I've, my most nostalgic moment from toys is, is really just sitting on my uh, floor in my apartment back in New York City with my dad on the couch watching Conan the Barbarian and, you know, my mother in the in the kitchen doing some arts and crafts and I'm, you know, sitting on the floor playing with toys. That's the most safest 
you know, environment you could be in as, you know, as a kid, you know, in, in your home with your parents, you know, um, playing with toys and just watching TV, you know, with your dad and stuff. So, um, and that's another thing too. It was, it was like, you know, brings me closer to my dad, man. My dad loved comic books. You know, he, he, he was a hard man. He was a tough guy, you know, but he still had his nerd side. You know, he still watched Star Trek, Deep Space Nine. He still, you know, Next Generation. He was a big fan of any, any of those. Battlestar Galactica, Babylon 5, uh, any of the uh, Star Wars movies. You know, he watched all that stuff. His big thing was Swords and Sorcery, too. He was the one who got me into Conan the Barbarian and Beastmaster and uh, Dragon Slayer and all that cool, all those awesome movies, you know, Excalibur. You know, so that's kind of the reason why I still collect because it, it just brings me back to that point in my head. You know, my father's a much older man now. He's, he has health issues, you know, but whenever I pick up a toy, I'm brought back to that, to that, uh, to those old times where, you know, he was a young guy and, you know, he, he was my hero, you know? So it's really, you know, just, I don't want to get too sentimental here, <laughs> but that's basically what it is for me, man. That's what it means to me. That's why when people say to me, why do you still collect toys, man? And then you're too old for that. It's like, no, you're never too old. Never too old to do anything. Still collect comic books, play video games, whatever it is that does that thing for you, that just puts you in that mindset where it's not such a sucky world. You know, it, 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 you're not so miserable or locked away. You should do that shit. Whether it's art, like I said, whether it's video games, whether it's exercise. You know, um, the only thing I would never condone is like you know recreational drug use or drinking you know alcoholism is a shit it's 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 not good um so take that as as you will you know i'm saying don't enjoy the occasional drink but you know don't make that the reason you want to go meet people you know because alcohol makes things people do stupid shit (laughs) so uh but yeah you know you'll find your thing that's really at the end of the day what this whole episode is about like i said i know i rambled for 20 minutes but i needed a second episode and Smoke some weed, and I really don't give a shit. I figure I just go balls to the wall. Um, my next episode will be a guest. I'm gonna have my one of my dearest friends from the wrestling business. Like, I'm still involved in the wrestling business um, in terms of uh, production and stuff like that. That's where I kind of put my my forte because um, I'm dealing with some disability, some health stuff. So uh, I can't never buy ever wrestle like I haven't wrestled in, in over a decade because of all the stuff that I'm going through. Um, but, uh, I've always stayed involved in terms of production and I've made so many dear friends who also collect figures, you know, some of the, some big names in wrestling, so, you know, collect actually like Matt Cardona, he's got his own channel where it's just based action figures, you know, and I would love to have him on the show and I will work on getting him on the show. Um, but, uh, I'm going to start with one of my dearest friends in pro wrestling. He, he, he you could catch him in a bunch of companies as the commentator or interviewer ring announcer. His name is Cheyenne Ortiz. The voice, because is what his nickname is. And we're just going to talk about wrestling figures and what the wrestling game meant to us and uh, what's his favorite action figure because he has uh, just a sh- an amazing wrestling collection. I, I'm not... Re- being in the wrestling business, <laughs> I don't really collect wrestling figures. Um, I just... I don't need 17 different Shawn Michaels. You know, I, I don't need... 14 different Undertakers. I got two, two, I got the two ultimate Shawn Michaels that came out, which were the most accurate versions I've ever seen of the Heartbreak Kid. And I was just like, all right, I'll take this, you know? Um, and I got a couple Undertaker figures from my favorite versions of him, which was the, you know, obviously the old school Dead Man with the purple gloves. Um, I think I got the gray gloves too. Um, I, uh, my favorite one was the Ministry of Darkness, which I got. More so the Unholy Alliance Undertaker when he was tag team champions with Big Show. That variant that came out, I grabbed that one because that was my all-time favorite, Dead Man. Um, I got the Undertaker, you know, when he fought Kane at WrestleMania 14 because that was a good Dead Man too. Um, the only one I'm missing is the American Badass and the one where he comes back. But I'm sure the Ultimates, they'll come out with him and I'll get him. Um, that's really what got me into wrestling figures was the Ultimates. The Ultimate versions, the Mattel Ultimates. Um, because I have... Triple H. Like, I just got my favorites, if I could be quite honest with you. Macho Man Randy Savage, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Triple H. Just those guys. I think I got a Ric Flair, you know? Um, I'm just, you know, when you see them, I grab them if they're loose. You know, I, I, look, I look for the elites and the ultimates. 
Um, I, I think I have the ultimate Ric Flair. I'm sorry, I take that back. I have because I liked his robe and shit. I wanted the elite Ric Flair from '92 because he has the Four Horsemen shirt, and I I like that because that's the Ric Flair I remember from the '90s. The one from the '80s is, you know, I was very young then, so it was kind of hairy. But I remember 1991 when he came to WWF as the real world champion and challenged Hogan, which I still think that's bullshit. We didn't get that match at WrestleMania eight, but that's a whole nother podcast in itself. Go to Spot Monkey Radio for that. <laughs> that's coming back. But uh, I think that's coming back at the end of January, if anybody's wondering. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm rambling now because I'm just trying to kill time. And uh, once I get talking about toys, man, I, I can just ramble for, for hours. You know, like, like I said, my collection started with Marvel Legends, and now it's it, it just spans Marvel, DC, G.I. Joe, He-Man, Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, uh, The Witcher, a Mythic Legions. Uh, I mean, Mez, I have Mezco, but it's Marvel and DC, mostly. Um, I had a Gomez figure, but I sold him, or I traded him um, a while back, I think, for a diorama piece. Because I just, it, what are you going to do with a bug? Like, I know it's their guy. Like, Gomez is their, like, uh, uh, was it, uh, what the hell is that, mascot? You know, so they make a bunch of toys. The only Gomez I will get at some point is the Mecca one. The, the, the spacesuit guy that goes into the, the guy, because I really just want that guy for G.I. Joe's. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's really why I want him. But that's another thing, too. You just get into accessories, vehicles. Like, the action figure game is insane now. You know, you're getting four-foot Galactus figures and three-foot Sentinel figures and a five-foot Brontosaurus or Bronchiosaurus, whatever the fuck it's called. You know, uh, three-foot Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, you know, that's what we... I, when I was a kid, I, and I might be the only one, but when I was a kid, that drove me crazy that nothing was to scale. Like the figure, if you put him in a car, it would barely just fit for him. And it was just like a small little piece of shit car. You know, like now it's to scale. The lights are lighting up. The trunk opens. The doors open. Um, if it has weaponry, sometimes it's on there. Sometimes it's not. I don't know. Give me a start on the McFarlane Batmobile. As much as I love that thing, you know. I would have paid an extra $30, $40 if it had to flip guns and some lights. That's all I'm saying. You know, I, I would have paid an extra $25 for that. You could have made it as an even $100, $105 and put at least the headlights and the backlights working. You know, you don't, you don't have to put, like, smoke in the thing like the like the Mattel um, Ultimate Batmobile, um, which I have that too. Um, Batman, listen, when it comes down to me, it's Batman, Wolverine, Iron Man, any variant, any vehicle, any accessory, I will get. I got the, the Spin Master Batwing. I have a customized video on Freshly Baked Props, which is also on this channel. Please check that out, where I customize the Batwing to fit two seven-inch or six to seven-inch figures. I got the Spin Master Batmobile that I customized to fit Batman in it, to, just so I could fit this Mezco Batman back here. I just got Robin for Christmas, so now I got Batman and Robin. I'm very happy about that. I'm going to be shooting some stuff with that soon, um, but I'd... Customized the Spin Master Batmobile for him. I got Bat Cycles for Robin. I got all kinds of stuff. Like I could, once, uh, once the governor came off, once I said to myself, you know what? I really don't give a shit what people think. I'm going to collect whatever I want because it makes me happy. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I don't hurt nobody. It's my hobby. It's, my, it's now slowly becoming my passion because I love taking pictures of them. I love doing the stop motion. I love doing the play motion stuff. I've literally tried everything. Just to see what I like. And I'll, that'll be a whole nother video. I think that'll be next. Um, just in terms of... I, I labeled it as toy photography, but it's just going to be toy photography, stop motion, and play motion. Just so you can understand the differences between the, the three and just enjoy yourself. Because like the, the best one I could say is play motion because it's literally just playing with your toys and filming it. Some people are... If you watch G.I. Joe Berg, I will link them down too. They just... They're in the shot. They don't give a shit. They acknowledge the camera's there, and they don't care. I tip my cap to them. Um, I'm trying to add a little bit more of a cinematic feel to mine, where you don't really see me in the shots. It's just my hands, certain things. Um, but it's fun. I mean, it's fun. It's fun, in, it's, it's fun in my age that I could play with toys and get away with it. No one's going to judge me or ridicule me for it. It's, it's nice. Um, but uh, I hope you feel the same way. And I hope if you're a toy photographer or if you're a stop motion person or a play motion person and you come across this video just leave a comment and be like hell yeah 
I'm the same way and I enjoy it and I love it, you know? And like I said, just put it this way. I've watched your videos most, most, most guaranteed. I've watched pretty much every single stop motion action figure video I could find. Every single play motion action figure video I can find. And I love them all. I love them all. They've inspired me. They've, they've made me feel like I can do it too. And like I said, it's interpretive, man. It, it's, it's art. Art is up to you. If you think it's good, if you like it, enjoy it, man. Don't let somebody ridicule you. Don't do it because you want people to like it. You know, don't do it because you want to impress people. Because I've learned a long time ago, the only person that truly matters is you. So the only person you should be impressing is yourself. I guess that's the whole reason I created this channel is when I look back on it, I can be proud of some of the things that I've made, some of the things I've done, and some of the things even, even I'm talking about. Even if I am rambling, I don't really give a shit. Um, but that's all the time I have because I got to get ready for bed. Um, and uh, I just appreciate you listening. If you came through and you listened and, and you took anything from this video, like I said, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Leave a like, subscribe, and comment below, man. Tell me what action figures mean to you. Like I said, I want to know what action figure got you into this. Uh, what made you start collecting? You know, what, what, what is keeping you collecting? You know, do you like the new lines? Do you like a whole new line that's coming out? Listen, I just discovered a bunch of websites because of some of these, some, some of these guys out here on these, cha on these channels, like Articulated Ninja. Just, I, I just discovered two websites because of him, you know, um, a 5k toys. I didn't even know existed until about six months ago. I just came across it while watching one of Articulated Ninja's videos. And I'm like, what the hell is 5k toys? And I went on there. I found my all-time favorite video game character, Death from Darksiders 2, who's available on there. And I already pre-ordered him. He comes out, I think, at the beginning of next year. I can't wait because he looked awesome. The pictures blew me away with how he looked. I'm like, holy shit. And I know a lot of these figures, like, I, they don't really name them. It's like the main characters. I guess they don't have the licenses or whatever. I don't know. I'm get them in trouble. But I can't wait to get that figure. You know, and, and looking at 5K toys, there's a bunch on there that I want. Just like, Holy shit, these figures are sick. The detail, everything. I saw the Samurai Ninja Turtles too on, on, on Articulated Ninjas uh, YouTube, man. I've been pretty cool for four inch figures. Uh, the Samurai Ninja, uh, Ninja Turtle. I, think, I don't think it's called Ninja Turtles. The Samurai Spring. I think I basically, they're coming out with all four turtles. They're just, instead of the the being, being Ninja Turtles and being named the artist Leonardo Dantel or whatever, they're just naming them the seasons, which is pretty cool. And instead of ninjas, they're samurais. So it's a pretty cool side around it. So, but it's, you could clearly tell what, what they are. And they're pretty cool. I, I see that they're coming out with uh, Autumn or Donnie. Um, but I just, you know, $60 for a four inch figure. I can't justify that. You know, I mean, he comes with cool accessories and everything, but he doesn't, I just don't really, like I love the Ninja Turtles and I, I got the ones I needed. To me, in my head, I got the, the NECA first movie ones. I got these NECA ones right here. I got two versions of them where I painted one, uh, where I painted the three, Leo, Donnie, and Raph. I mean, Leo, Donnie, and Mikey. Um, and I got up on this shelf over here, the Loyal Subjects ones, which I'll do a review soon for. Um, I, I like them, but I don't like them. I saw Casey Jones in the wild. I was going to buy them, but then when I saw, like, I was going to buy them online and... Something told me not to, and then when I went to Target one afternoon, I saw him there, and man, was I disappointed in the, the, the human ones. The Ninja Turtles, they're pretty cool. They're not bad. Some issues, and I'll, like I said, I'll get in that in my review video when, it, when that comes out, but I got the turtles I need. I, I mean, well, again, when I told you before, how many fucking variants of the same thing do you need? You know, I got the movie, the comic, and those are technically the Nickelodeon cartoon version. If you don't think so, you can, I'd be glad to debate you because clearly they are. Um, they even have the gap in Mikey's teeth from the cartoon, from the, uh, t the 2012 re uh, remake on Nickelodeon, which is a highly underrated cartoon. And I'll get into that stuff. Now it's another whole podcast in itself and shit like that. I'll definitely get into that. But uh, like I said, that's all the time I have, guys. I don't want to ramble anymore. Um, thank you so much for joining. If, like I said, if you watch to the end, I much appreciate this. Please like and subscribe, share it. Um, leave comments. Just tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. And uh, as always, man, just keep playing and have some fun. Life's a game, man. Enjoy it.